Have you ever stumbled upon a TV series that's a roller coaster of emotions? Well, buckle up, because New Heart is just that. Airing back in 1982, it's a show packed with laughter, shockers, and tear jerking moments. This series keeps you hooked from start to finish. The characters are as diverse as they come, each bringing their own unique flair to the table. So, who's your favorite among the bunch? Feel free to share in the comments below. We're eager to hear your thoughts, and stay tuned because we've got plenty more funny, shocking, and even sad facts about New Heart coming your way. Keep watching this video to uncover them all. Share your cherished memories or personal experiences related to the show in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Bob Newhart, an American comedy icon, is known for his work in American television, particularly with his second TV series. The show Newhart is beloved for its fun-loving vibe and funny characters. Episodes like The Great White Buck, Pick on Dick, and the one where Dick does a TV marathon are especially hilarious. The cast, which includes memorable characters like Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, adds to the show's charm. While some viewers may find characters like Stephanie and Michael a bit annoying, most agree that the series is well-written, well-acted, and well-made. Although there are some bumps in later seasons, the show remains popular, ending with a great finale. Fans are eagerly waiting for its DVD release. Bob Newhart's status as a comedic legend is clear in this classic sitcom. Bob Newhart took an unconventional approach to protect the surprise ending of the series. To mislead the tabloid press, he purposely leaked a false ending story. According to this version, in the final episode, after getting hit by a golf ball, Dick Loudon would awaken in heaven. The twist involved meeting God, portrayed by either George Burns or George C. Scott. Larry, a character in the series, is consistently seen with a quarter in his ear. Interestingly, William Sanderson, the actor portraying Larry, also used this prop in the movie Coal Miner's Daughter. Julia Duffy, a cast member, regarded Bob Newhart as a mentor. This points to a professional relationship that extended beyond the on-screen dynamic. These behind-the-scenes details provide a glimpse into the creative decisions and personal connections within the production of the series. In television, a notable series emerged in 1982 featuring comedian Bob Newhart. Born to Julia Paulin and George David Newhart, the latter a part owner of a plumbing and heating supply business, Bob brought his unique comedic touch to the small screen. The series, titled Newhart, took an unexpected turn in its final episode, revealing that the entire storyline was a creation of Robert Hartley's dream. This idea came up during season six as Bob and his wife faced challenges with CBS, frustrated by the network's frequent changes in the show's time slot. It was a twist that added complexity to the narrative. Bob Newhart's television journey included prior successes, notably The Bob Newhart Show in 1972. Interestingly, several co-stars from his earlier ventures, such as Marshall Wallace, Bill Daly, Tom Poston, William Sanderson, Julia Duffy, and Peter Scolari, converged in a 1997 episode of George and Leo. This reunion showcased the enduring connections forged within Newhart's television ventures. In the world of television, Bob's impact resonates through his distinct comedic style and the unexpected narrative turn in Newhart, leaving a lasting impression on the sitcom landscape. It's a reflection of the versatility and lasting appeal of his work in the medium. Newhart, a television series that aired in the early 1980s, featured the evolving marriage of the Loudons, whose years together seemed to fluctuate throughout the show's run. Initially, they were depicted as being married for 16 years, but later references suggested different durations, such as 12 years and 15 years. Interestingly, the town or community where the Vermont Inn, a central location in the series, was situated remained unnamed throughout the entire eight-year duration of the show. One notable aspect of the series was Julia Duffy's reprisal of her on-screen relationship with Peter Scolari, which occurred on Newhart and later in Jason Alexander's TV show Listen Up in 2004. This connection underscores the lasting impact of the show's characters and their relationships beyond the confines of the series. In the interesting series, there's a character named Daryl who doesn't talk because of an encounter with a porcupine when he was seven. This adds a unique twist to the story and makes people curious about Daryl's past. Jane Milmore joined the show as a writer and brought new ideas that made the characters more interesting. Her writing made the show more exciting and the audience liked it. As the series went on, they changed how they made it. Instead of recording on video, they started filming it, which made it look better. This change kept people interested in the show. 
these changes in the story and how they made the show show that they want to keep it fresh and keep people interested. Daryl not talking, Jane Milmore's writing, and the new way of making the show all make it special and make people like it a lot. In TV, the small details about the characters and how the show is made can really make a difference in how good it is. These details make shows like New Heart stay in people's minds for a long time. So, Daryl not talking, Jane Milmore's writing, and the new way of making the show all make it a story that people will remember for a long time. Bob Newhart, born George Robert Newhart, had a childhood wish to be known simply as Bob. To fulfill this desire, he dropped his first two names and became Bob. Gaining public recognition through roles like Dr. Robert Bob Hartley in The Bob Newhart Show and Dick Loudon in Newhart, he made a mark in the entertainment industry. In Newhart, his influence extended beyond acting. He proposed the use of film starting from the second season to give the show a more authentic appearance. His career is marked by notable roles in The Bob Newhart Show and Newhart, where he showcased his comedic talent. Shifting to film in Newhart underscored his commitment to enhancing the show's visual authenticity. Bob Newhart's journey from a childhood wish to be called Bob to his roles in television reflects his significant influence on the entertainment industry. People in Vermont didn't like that New Hampshire was shown instead of their state at the beginning of the show. But despite this mistake, people really liked the show, especially because Julia Duffy did such a great job as Stephanie Vanderkellen. The opening credits of the show were interesting because they showed mistakes from the movie on Golden Pond. If you pay close attention, you can see famous actors like Henry Fonda and Katherine Hepburn in a car scene. It's cool because William Lanto, who was in the show, also appeared in on Golden Pond. The fact that these two productions are connected shows how talented people in the entertainment industry are and how they know each other. It's fun for viewers to notice these connections while watching the show. The nods to On Golden Pond in the opening credits made fans happy and added more depth to the show. Overall, the show was a big hit because it was funny, had good stories, and showed interesting connections between different movies and TV shows. It was Peter Scolari joined the cast of Newhart in 1984, replacing Stephen Campman after guest starring in two episodes the previous year. Julia Duffy, a regular on the show, missed three episodes due to pregnancy. Interestingly, Jerry Van initially aimed for the role of George Udley but faced an unsuccessful audition. Peter Scolari's audition in 1984 followed his brief appearance in 1982, solidifying his role in the series. Julia Duffy's absence during three episodes was a result of her pregnancy, a natural occurrence that temporarily affected her participation. Jerry Van, the initial choice for George Utley, faced an unsuccessful audition for the character. In summary, Newhart experienced cast changes with Peter Scolari joining in 1984, Julia Duffy missing episodes due to pregnancy, and Jerry Van failing to secure the role of George Utley. During research for the show, Mary Fran visited numerous Vermont inns to gather authentic insights. She carefully selected false graph dishes to use as props at the Stratford Inn. Bob Newhart, known for his clean comedy, entertained audiences with his wit and charm. In one memorable episode called The Driving Instructor, he delivered a classic joke in his deadpan style. Audiences chuckled at the irony of the situation. Interestingly, Larry's role was originally meant for Tracy Walter, but William Sanderson impressed casting directors during auditions and secured the part. Sanderson's portrayal added depth and humor to the character, enhancing the show's ensemble dynamic. Overall, the cast crafted a timeless comedy that still entertains audiences today. The show's impact on television history remains significant. Julia Duffy, who considered Bob Newhart her favorite comedic inspiration, joined the TV series in its second season. Despite receiving seven Emmy nominations in the Supporting Actress category for her role in Newhart, she never won. As for Bob Newhart, the idea for the final episode, The Last Newhart, revealing the entire series as a dream of Dr. Bob, Hartley from The Bob Newhart Show, came from his wife, Ginny Newhart. In short, Julia Duffy admired Bob Newhart's comedy, but never won an Emmy despite numerous nominations. The unexpected twist in the last episode, conceived by Jenny Newhart, added a unique touch to the series, leaving a lasting impression on its conclusion. Newhart was a TV series that aired in the 1980s. The exterior scenes of the Stratford Inn were filmed at the Waybury Inn in Vermont. Eileen Brennan, known for her role as Captain Doreen Lewis in Private Benjamin, achieved significant success. 
She won an Emmy for her part in the television spin-off of the film. Brennan received seven Emmy nominations, including for her appearances on Taxi, 30 Something, and Newhart. Bob Newhart, along with his wife Jenny, had four children Robert William, Courtney, Timothy, and Jennifer. He was also an uncle to Paul Brittain. Bob Newhart, recognized for his sitcoms, was specific about not portraying a father figure caught in funny situations. This preference showed during the sixth season of The Bob Newhart Show. The writers suggested a storyline involving Emily Hartley's pregnancy. Newhart found it amusing and asked, It's very funny. Who are you going to get to play Bob? Peter Scolari, an actor mentored by Newhart, considered him his favorite mentor and closest friend. This speaks to the influence and friendship in their professional bond. Outside television, Newhart's family includes his sister, Sister M. Joan Newhart, who became a nun. In summary, Bob Newhart's influence extends beyond TV, shaping stories, and building meaningful relationships in the entertainment industry. Newhart, a TV series from 1982, featured opening credits filmed in and above Sandwich, New Hampshire. The aerial shots of Maple Street set the scene, showcasing views of Sandwich Town Hall and Grange Hall, depending on the version of the theme song. The car in the credits is seen turning from Skinner Street onto Church Street. In a memorable episode, Chester, the absent-minded mayor of the town, rushes into the Stratford End, warning about the Thomas Hill Bridge being out. The character Thomas Hill, portrayed by Jim Dixon, played the buffoonish friend of Chester. Throughout the show's run, the main character subtly referred to his previous work in the Bob Newhart show. These references, often veiled, poked fun at the quirks of Dr. Robert Hartley. Notably, these nods did not provide any hints about the series finale. The series, known for its straightforward humor and clever references, became a staple for fans of comedy. The small town setting, with its quirky characters and dry wit, created a unique blend that resonated with audiences. Bob Newhart, famous for his comedy album The Button-Down Mind of Bob Newhart, had a huge hit in 1960. His album outsold Elvis Presley and The Sound of Music original Broadway cast album that year. It won three Grammy Awards, including Album of the Year for 1960. In the TV series, the characters Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, known for their deep thoughts, likely took inspiration from W. Somerset Maugham's book The Razor's Edge. The main character, Larry Daryl, traveled the world searching for the meaning of life. Bob Newhart had a close friendship with the late Suzanne Plachette. He gave a eulogy at her funeral on January 24, 2008. Another friend from the Bob Newhart show, Marsha Wallace, also paid tribute to Plachette. Both actresses had worked with him on the show. In the TV series, Daryl and Daryl went by the names Larry initially, but they changed their names to avoid confusion. Interestingly, at the end of each episode, the kittens meowing in the MTM logo is done by Bob Newhart. Julia Duffy, who was pregnant during several episodes, cleverly hid her condition by wearing baggy clothes and often positioning herself strategically behind furniture. It was a creative solution that kept her character's storyline intact without drawing attention to her personal life. The charm of the show was not only in its witty dialogue and hilarious situations, but also in the clever ways the actors managed real-life situations. Barry Kemp, the creator of the series, faced pushback from CBS regarding the Kirk Devane character, concerned that his habitual lying and insincerity might alienate viewers. To soften the character, Kemp introduced Cindy, Kirk's girlfriend and later wife. However, CBS continued to pressure Kemp to drop the character, straining his relationship with actor Stephen Campman, who portrayed Kirk. The introduction of Peter Scolari's character, Michael Harris, in season two, proved popular with both the audience and the cast, leading Kemp to write out Campman's character at the end of that season. Peter Scolari, best known for his role as Michael Harris, also had Bob Newhart as his acting mentor. In TV, Bob Newhart stands out. Every show he starred in had his name in the title. Starting with The Bob Newhart Show in 1961, then its comeback in 1972, he kept this trend with Newhart in 1982, Bob in 1992, and George and Leo in 1997. In Newhart from 1982, two notable names, Peter Scolari and Tom Poston, had connections with him. Peter Scolari often golfed with Bob Newhart, bringing friendship to the Greens. Meanwhile, Tom Poston, a friend not only to Newhart, but also to Betty White, added another layer to the social circle around the show. This TV series, like others in his career, follows a consistent theme, a title featuring his name. 
The simplicity of this naming style hides the complexity of the characters and relationships within the shows, making it a hallmark of New Hearts TV legacy. In entertainment, where dynamics can be complex and relationships fleeting, Bob Newhart's presence remains strong in the straightforwardness of his show titles and the connections he formed with fellow actors like Peter Scolari and Tom Poston. In the final episode, despite the dream revelation, books by Dick Loudon and the characters Larry, Daryl, and Daryl appeared in various episodes of Coach, also created by Barry Kemp. Bob Newhart, born in 1929, saw his sitcom wives get successively younger as the years went by. In The Bob Newhart Show, Suzanne Plachette, born in 1937, was eight years younger. In Newhart, Mary Fran, born in 1943, was 14 years younger. And in Bob, Garlene Watkins, born in 1952, was 23 years younger. Larry, Daryl, and Daryl were supposed to be one-time characters. However, the studio audience's reaction to their introduction was so spontaneous that the producers decided to make them regular characters. In the world of television, the 1982 TV series New Heart has a shocking and tragic trivia fact. The character Leslie Vanderkellen, played by Jennifer Holmes, met an unexpected fate. In a plot twist that left viewers in disbelief, Leslie's character was abruptly written out of the series due to Jennifer Holmes's untimely death. The unforeseen loss added an unexpected layer of sorrow to the show, leaving both the cast and audience grappling with the harsh reality of life's unpredictability. The show primarily centers on the character Dick Loudon, played by Bob Newhart, who runs a quaint inn in Vermont. The narrative unfolds with a blend of humor and charm as it explores the day-to-day -day experiences of the inn's eccentric staff and guests. Dick's deadpan delivery and the quirky personalities that populate the inn contribute to the series' unique appeal. Throughout its run, Newhart received acclaim for its witty writing and the chemistry among the cast. Bob Newhart's portrayal of the mild-mannered innkeeper became a cornerstone of the show's success. The comedic interplay and clever dialogue became defining features of the series. As the show progressed, it managed to keep audiences engaged with its blend of humor and relatable characters. However, the unforeseen tragedy surrounding Jennifer Holmes serves as a poignant reminder of the fragile nature of life, casting a somber shadow over the lighthearted world of Newhart. In the world of television, where the line between fiction and reality is often distinct, the loss of a cast member can deeply affect both the narrative and the viewing experience. The abrupt departure of Jennifer Holmes stands as a reminder of the unexpected challenges that can arise behind the scenes, creating a bittersweet note in the history of Newhart. In a surprising turn of events, one of the main characters in Newhart was actually killed off because the actor who played him, George Utley, wanted to leave the show. This left fans shocked and saddened by the unexpected departure of a beloved character. Despite the character's absence, the show continued on, but his departure left a noticeable void in the series. This unexpected twist serves as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of television production and the impact it can have on both the cast and the audience. In the series New Heart, there's a surprising twist where the entirety of the final season was revealed to be just a dream by the main character. This shocked many viewers who had been following the show as it essentially made all the events of that season non-existent within the storyline. The show ran for eight seasons and followed the life of an innkeeper in a small Vermont town and his interactions with the quirky locals and guests at his inn. It had a mix of comedy and light-hearted drama with the main character's deadpan delivery and the ensemble cast's comedic timing being highlights of the series. Throughout its run, the show maintained a consistent tone, focusing on the everyday happenings in the town and the relationships between its characters. Despite its simple premise, it had a dedicated fan base and remains a classic example of 1980s sitcom television. However, despite its popularity, the show also faced its share of sadness. One particularly sad moment was when an actress who portrayed the main character's wife unexpectedly passed away during the show's run. Her death had a profound effect on the cast and crew, and the show paid tribute to her memory in subsequent episodes. Despite this setback, the show continued to deliver entertaining and memorable episodes until its conclusion. It is fondly remembered by fans for its humor, charm, and the unexpected twists that kept viewers engaged. In the world of television, the 1982 sitcom New Heart holds a surprising and somewhat sad trivia tidbit. The character Larry, played by William Sanderson, was initially meant to play a bigger role in the show. 
However, due to unexpected events, his character got written out after the first season. This sudden change left both the audience and the cast shocked and saddened, altering the show's direction. Newhart, a comedy series starring Bob Newhart as innkeeper Dick Loudon, featured a quirky group of characters. Despite its humor, Larry's abrupt exit added an unexpected touch of sorrow to the show's early days. Larry, a character who contributed to the series' dynamics, leaving so suddenly, showed how unpredictable TV production can be. These unforeseen changes can shape a show's course and affect how the audience connects with the characters. To sum it up, the 1982 TV series Newhart took an unforeseen turn with Larry's departure after the first season, bringing an element of surprise and sadness to the show's story. This incident highlights the ever-changing nature of TV production and how unexpected events can shape a series. In a surprising twist, the character George Utley from the series met his end in an unusual way. In one episode, he got stuck in a vent and tragically passed away. This shocking event left fans stunned and saddened by the sudden departure of a beloved character. The show offered a unique mix of humor and cleverness, drawing in audiences with its quirky characters and clever dialogue. Set in a cozy Vermont inn, it followed the adventures of innkeeper Dick Loudon and his diverse group of friends and guests. Throughout its time on air, the series received praise for its smart writing and talented cast. It was known for its sharp wit and memorable characters, making a mark in television history. Despite its comedic tone, the show didn't shy away from addressing serious topics. From relationships to personal challenges, it explored the complexities of life with honesty and sincerity. With its endearing characters and engaging storytelling, the show continues to delight audiences even years after its debut. It remains a favorite sitcom among fans, both old and new alike. In an unexpected turn, one of the actors on the show passed away during its run. Actress Mary Fran, who played the character Joanna Loudon, tragically died from a heart attack in 1998, leaving fans and colleagues mourning her loss. This unforeseen event cast a shadow over the series and its cast. The sitcom, which started airing in 1982, follows the story of Dick Loudon, played by Bob Newhart. Dick, a writer, moves to a small town in Vermont to manage an inn with his wife, Joanna. The show humorously portrays their interactions with the quirky townsfolk and the situations they face while running the inn. The show's unique humor and memorable characters, including Larry, Daryl, and Daryl, quickly won over audiences. Bob Newhart's deadpan delivery and comedic timing played a significant role in the show's success, making it a favorite among viewers. Throughout its run, the show addressed various social issues and depicted small-town life, all while providing laughs. It received critical acclaim and built a loyal fan base, securing its place in television history. Despite its comedic tone, the show occasionally touched on more serious topics, showcasing the cast and writers' versatility. Mary Fran's unexpected passing reminds us of the show's impact on its audience and the lasting impression it made. In a surprising turn, one interesting fact about the 1982 TV series Newhart is that its original ending revealed the entire show to be a dream of the character Bob Newhart from his previous sitcom, The Bob Newhart Show. This twist left many viewers shocked and saddened by the realization that the characters and events they had grown attached to were just products of Bob's imagination. Throughout the show, audiences followed the life of Bob Newhart, a writer and innkeeper, as he managed a cozy inn in a small Vermont town. The humor of the series often came from the oddities of the town's residents and the unusual situations they found themselves in. Newhart featured a talented cast, including actors such as Mary Fran, who played Bob's wife Joanna, and Tom Poston, who portrayed the clumsy handyman George Utley. Their interactions with Bob and each other added depth and humor to the storyline. Despite its comedic nature, Newhart occasionally tackled more serious topics, like the challenges of owning a small business and the complexities of relationships. These moments of depth balanced the humor and kept viewers interested throughout the show's run. In its final episode, Newhart surprised audiences with its unexpected ending, securing its place in television history as a memorable and thought-provoking series. In a surprising twist, one of the main characters, Leslie Vanderkellen, played by Jennifer Holmes, was supposed to appear in multiple episodes, but left the show early due to disagreements with the producers. Despite its success, the series faced a sad event when actress Mary Fran, who played Joanna Loudon, died unexpectedly during the final season's production. 
Her absence was addressed in the story, but her passing cast a shadow over the set. The show, created by Barry Kemp, follows Dick Loudon, a writer who moves from New York City to a small Vermont town with his wife to run an inn. It's known for its clever humor and quirky characters, offering a fresh take on sitcoms of its time. During its time on air, Newhart received praise and built a dedicated fan base for its smart writing and memorable characters. The chemistry among the cast, including Bob Newhart, Tom Poston, and Peter Scolari, added to its appeal. Despite facing challenges like cast changes and the loss of a beloved actress, the show remained charming and entertaining until its conclusion.